All right, so we've gotten a page from the database, or the page data from the database, and sped it out on our page. So that's a pretty cool accomplishment. Now let's make it a little more dynamic. Let's be able to use the browser to tell it which page to load. In order to do that, we're going to send data through the browser. And you might have seen this before um, on other websites, but we're going to go ahead and send information by putting a question mark after the URL, which tells it we're going to put some uh, data in here. And let's just say page equals one. Hit enter. And uh, nothing changed because we haven't told the page to do anything with that information but it makes it available to us and what that does and how it's available is that PHP automatically creates an array called the git array and the git array stores all the information we send up here because we could put some more parameters up here we could say and something equals that so that git array is going to have a key for page and that's going to be one. It's going to have a key for something, and that's going to be three, four, five, three, four. So let's do something with this information. The git array is written a little bit different, but pretty much the same as any other array. But it's written like this: dollar sign underscore all caps git, and then our brackets. So, just to kind of test this out, let's go down here into our body and uh, after we echo out the page header, let's go ahead and do echo underscore or dollar sign underscore git and we'll do page. So, page again represents this right here so this becomes the key that we're looking for so now if I refresh we see the number one here and if I change this something crazy here it's gonna spit that out there pretty cool so what can we do with this we can use this to change our query so we put the one back in there. Come over here. We'll go ahead and get rid of this echo here. We don't need that. That's just for an example. And go back to our setup. And instead of hard coding in where ID equals one, let's do where ID equals get page. Now within this uh, query here, within these double quotes, we do not need to put the single quotes in here around the brackets. So don't get that confused. If you end up getting an error, you might check that. So we'll go ahead and save. And if it's not obvious yet, what's going to happen is it's going to take the value of whatever we put in the URL for page and spit it out right here. So let's hop over to our page and refresh. And there you go. Same thing. That's not too impressive. However, if we change this to 2, now load it our About Us page. That's pretty impressive. Now, we run into a situation here. Um, say this is on a domain name, you know, whatever.com. Um, if you don't have that page equals after that, and somebody just goes to whatever.com, we got some errors. And that's not good. Um, we want to. We need to tell the page what to do if that value is not sent. Basically, what's the home page? What's the default page that's going to load? Should there not be a page sent through the URL? So we need to do what's called an if statement or a conditional in PHP. So let's do this. We're going to do if. So we're going to run a function inside this if to check to see if. Um, the get array has a key page. 
So we'll do if, and then inside these parentheses, is set. And this is a function itself, so it needs a set of parentheses also. Uh, looks a little confusing. Um, and then inside there, the parameter, we want to check to see what is set. So get page. So this line here is saying if get page or if the page key in get is set or if it really exists, then do something. And the something happens in these brackets. Now we could copy this whole query and put it in here and, and manipulate it. But let's not do that so we'll not add more code than we need. Let's just do this. Let's create a variable called page ID equals get page. So if the URL actually has page equals something, then go ahead and create a variable called page ID and make it equal to whatever number that was or whatever ID number we gave it. Now in order to make that work we also need to change this down here to page ID. Now this still doesn't fix our problem because we save this and then hop over here and refresh and hop over here and we do page equals one that works because it's taking that page because it is set and it's saving as page ID and inserting it here so that's fine pretty much exactly what we already did but if we take this off again we're gonna get an error so what we need to do is create an else to this condition so basically we're asking a question and if we don't get the answer we want we wanted to do something else so to do that after these uh, curly brackets say else and then we create another set of curly brackets and in this case we're still going to create the, uh, the we're still going to create the variable page ID only this time we're going to tell it exactly what we want and we're going to say one for the home page so just to run through that really quick again if page has a value in the URL if there's a page equals something go ahead and assign that something to the page ID variable and then spit it out here in our query so it loads the right page however if there isn't a page variable go ahead and then run this else statement create that page ID variable but we're gonna go ahead and tell it we want it to be page ID 1 for the home page So save that refresh there we go we loaded our home page pretty cool so we'll go ahead and uh, comment this a little bit now the reason we put these comments in here is not just for you guys so that you guys can learn and go back through the code and, and see what I wrote here but you need to get in that habit anyways if you're creating web pages um, you know even if you're on your own it's good to put this in here because if further on down the road you need to look at this again you can remind yourself what you were doing and why but if you're working on a team it's even more important because other people are going to come in here and look at your code and they need to be able to make heads or tails of what's going on and they need to be able to do it quick you know you might have two people that understand PHP looking at PHP but that doesn't mean that they can read what somebody else wrote so these comments are really important to really navigate through a page that way somebody doesn't have to go through and and really look at all the PHP you did and try and figure out exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it before they start working this pretty much sets it out in front of them so it's really helpful and you won't really get a job or a good job if you don't do this so this is cool and all but uh, do we really expect people to know to come here and you know do this page equals one in order to go to the home page no that's what our navigation is for so 
let's pop over to index here and now for our href we can go ahead and say we want to load the index page so index.php and then we go ahead and add that on there so question mark page equals one so then we can say copy this here place that in the href because we know about us is page number two so let's save that pop back over to our page and refresh now when we click on about us changes it to page equals two home page equals one now we've got that index.php in here now and if you want to get rid of that and make it a little cleaner you don't actually have to put index in there you can go ahead and just keep the question mark there like that so now if we refresh actually if we go back to just the Adam CMS there and we just do about us now it just does the uh, question mark page equals but that's pretty cool so that's how you create your navigation to load different content now we'll be creating what they call fancy or pretty or um, there's all sorts of different terms for it but better looking URLs down the road here uh, you'll notice you, you still see this on on some pages but if you really want to make it uh, SEO friendly and just overall look better we're going to get it to the point where we can just simply type in home and that's going to take us to the home page um, or you know about dash us or something like that and it still is able to query the database and find the right page but that's down the road now really quick I want to slip in something something cool here we're gonna go ahead and use um, another conditional to make sure that the uh, navigation shows the right page selected because right now we have that uh, active class hard-coded on the uh, home link here so even when we go to about us home still looks like it's selected so let's go ahead and just remove this for a second we'll just remember that the class needs to be active so let's go here and inside the tag here create some PHP and we're gonna run an if statement we're gonna do this all in line we're gonna do if and uh, remember in the setup we have that page ID variable page ID is equal to one then in our brackets here we're gonna do something we're gonna echo out a string so so in a set of quotes here class equals now we're gonna do double quotes here now this is the reason why we're using single quotes for the echo because we need to be able to use double quotes inside the string and we don't want to break the PHP so that's important to note active so what this is gonna do is it's gonna check when the page loads it's gonna say if the page ID is equal to one go ahead and spit out that class if not leave the class out of it now we need to finish our PHP here there we go and make sure the space is here otherwise it's gonna run li class all together and that's gonna mess things up so let's go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it right here and in this case we want to say if page ID is equal to 2 then make the uh, class active so it's gonna completely ignore this line here if our page ID is equal to 2 but down here it's gonna realize that it's true and go ahead and echo that out so this is a cool way to not only manipulate what shows up on the page um, but manipulate the uh, HTML itself dynamically so we'll save 
and click on about us there you go now our class is set to active click on home active so you can view the source here and see what happened scroll down there you go see it stuck that in there but it ignored it on here now we got this little space here and that makes for some bad HTML um, I know I was just being particular about that space so let's go here and instead of putting that space here let's get rid of that space here we'll put the space inside the echo so we'll save that go ahead and refresh and view the source there you go so that looks a little better we don't have that extra space here when the class isn't being put in there so that's pretty cool and uh, really quick uh, one of the tools we're going to be using here in the uh, future videos for kind of debugging and, and looking at things um, if, you're if you're using Chrome and actually this works in Firefox too but uh, I recommend using Chrome uh, because it's gonna be more consistent with what we're doing but uh, we just looked at the uh, source to see that so another another way we can look at this is uh, right click inspect element and uh, Chrome is going to show us right here where we're at so this is a pretty cool tool and uh, you'll see me using this uh, later on down the road and I'll explain it a little better but uh, there you have it so we're gonna get into some more advanced stuff here uh, coming up